with Democracy Now!, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. We begin today's show looking at the Gulf nation of Bahrain, a close U.S. ally and the home of the Navy's Fifth Fleet. Tensions remain high in Bahrain after a teenager was killed last week on the second anniversary of pro-democracy protests. Since February 2011, at least 87 people have died at the hands of U.S.-backed security forces. While talks are taking place this week between the Bahraini government and opposition groups, several of that nation's leading human rights defenders remain imprisoned. Attorney Abdelhadi al Khawaja, the co founder of the Bahrain Center for Human Rights, is serving a life sentence. He's already been held for nearly two years. Nabil Rajab, another prominent human rights defender, is serving a three year sentence. Democracy Now! correspondent and Nation Institute fellow Sharif Abdel Qadus has just returned from Bahrain. His latest article, Scenes from a Bahraini Burial, will be published by The Nation today. He joins us from his home in Cairo, Egypt. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Sharif. Uh, talk about what you found in Bahrain, and how difficult was it to get in? Well, I uh, actually was granted uh, at the last moment uh, a journalist visa to enter for three days. Uh, and so I was there for the, uh, the uprising, the anniversary of the uprising on February 14th. And uh, really, uh, the, on that day and the, the days that uh, afterwards, Bahrain had the feeling of a country under occupation. Uh, there was uh, helmeted riot police in full armor, uh, wielding shotguns, tear gas, sound grenades, uh, uh, deployed at around villages uh, outside of the capital. Um, there was helicopters buzzing overhead, uh, conducting surveillance, police helicopters. There were uh, checkpoints set up, uh, and this is a feature of uh, life in Bahrain, checkpoints along the major roads with uh, security forces stopping motorists, checking IDs, uh, sometimes uh, you can keeping people for hours and harassing them. And uh, uh, meanwhile, inside the villages, the, there's uh, uh, clashes take place with police, uh, uh, young men and boys uh, in t-shirt balaclavas throwing Molotov cocktails and stones uh, at police and uh, usually be, uh, being attacked with uh, shotguns and uh, suffocating amounts of tear gas. Um, you see many of these uh, young men going towards uh, the site of the Pearl Roundabout, uh, that roundabout that was destroyed by the government. Uh, in, uh, in the early months of the uprising in 2011. And uh, this is a recurring symbolic, a symbolic act of resistance to reclaim uh, the birthplace of the uprising. Uh, so so th this, was, uh, this was the scene on the ground in Bahrain. Uh, and of course, as you mentioned, uh, on that day, a 16-year-old boy by the name of Hussein al-Jaziri was uh, shot and killed by a police officer. Uh, I spoke to eyewitnesses who told me he was no more than three or four yards away from the police officer uh, when he was killed. The, um, this has only fueled the unrest, and his funeral two days later was attended by thousands of people uh, holding up pictures of him, uh, a smiling picture of him, uh, say, chanting things like, down with Hamad, uh, the king of Bahrain, chanting things like, uh, I'm the next martyr. And uh, this was despite uh, police efforts to really uh, cordon off the entire area. Um, in the morning of that day, police had put roadblocks on all the major roads leading to a major area. Uh, to these two villages where the funeral march would take place. Um, and uh, really, there was an unforgettable scene as the march reached the graveyard and Hassan's body was being lowered into the grave. Uh, the protesters continued going forward towards the Pearl Roundabout, where uh, you know dozens of security forces were waiting for them. And there was tear gas being fired, and people were holding uh, tissues and gas masks over their hands and mouth as this uh, body was being lowered into the ground. And so this is the kind of scene uh, that, that is in Bahrain, and many people lament there uh, from the opposition movement that uh, they have been forsaken by the international community and forgotten by the world's media uh, for this uprising that doesn't get uh, a lot of attention uh, in the media. And, Sharif, you mentioned the tear gas that was fired. And in your article, you talk about the lethal use of tear gas throughout this, uh, uh, this democracy uprising by the, uh, the, the forces, uh, the government forces uh, in Bahrain. Could you expand on that? Right. Well, the police—and it must be mentioned that uh, large ranks of the police 
uh, are recruits from other countries like Pakistan, um, Yemen, and Jordan, and they're referred to by uh, protesters and opposition people as mercenaries. But uh, the security forces, the government, have been uh, heavily criticized for their use of tear gas in Bahrain. People speak about it as an unavoidable hazard of everyday life. Uh, Physicians for Human Rights, the U.S.-based uh, group, uh, released a study last year that found that uh, their use, the government's use of tear gas, was unprecedented in the world. Uh, people speak about how it's shot into apartments, into uh, cars. Uh, women, pregnant women, have had miscarriages because of this. People speak of different types of colored gas, yellow and blue and black. Uh, and so. Uh, this is the kind of uh, uh, the repression and crackdown on dissent that we're seeing. And on the eve of the uh, uprising, a woman by the name of Amina Said Mahdi, who was a 36-year-old cashier at a country mall, at a mall, uh, died of a lung infection after a month-long stint in hospital. Uh, she um, would go home every day to her village in Abu Siba and have to uh, be exposed to a lot of gas. There was a lot of clashes around her village, and she would uh, often faint on the way home. Uh, people who documented her case told me that she would vomit often. Uh, she had stomach problems and eventually developed a, a lung infection. Now, she did have pre-existing medical conditions, um, which, compli which, uh, which complicate the case, but her family points to the government and blame her directly for the killing, and hundreds turned out for her funeral. Uh, and they lay the blame also uh, and call her a martyr, saying she died uh, at, the, at the hands of the government's uh, use of, lethal use of tear gas. Sharif, can you talk about um, the announcement uh, by the king, uh, King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifi, to, uh, and, uh, to begin talks with the political opposition, their significance, uh, uh, the monarchy close ally of the United States government? Right. The king in late January called for a national dialogue to be held. The first session was held on uh, February 10th. This is the first attempt at talks in over 18 months since dialogue broke down in the summer of 2011. Uh, it involves six opposition groups, uh, along with uh, pro-government representatives and the government themselves uh, in these talks. Uh, the uh, people, the, the Al Wafaq Society, which is the largest uh, political opposition group, is calling for a constitutional monarchy, uh, major reforms, including uh, an elected prime minister to replace the king's uncle, who's been in, uh, in power as prime minister for an astounding 42 years. Um, th there's a lot of skepticism amongst many of the people I spoke to on the ground of the outcome of this talks that speaks to a deep mistrust of the government, uh, given the, the crackdown that we've seen on protesters and on human rights workers over these last two years. Uh, they, they say that uh, none of the recommendations put forward in a government-commissioned inquiry uh, that was released in uh, November 2011 that was headed by Sharif Basuni, uh, none of them have been implemented. Uh, they say that none of the — or none of the key ones have been implemented, rather. The same goes for UN reports released in September that had a host of recommendations. Uh, they say none of those have been implemented. And uh, there's a lot of skepticism and mistrust of the government. Uh, and so we'll have to see where these talks go forward. But the, 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 the increased unrest that we've seen in the last week uh, threatens to derail them. Sharif, I want to thank you for being with us. Sharif Adokadus, Democracy Now! correspondent, fellow at the Nation Institute. His latest piece for the nation is Scenes from a Bahraini Burial. It is published today, and we'll link to it at democracynow.org. Sharif speaking to us overlooking Tahrir Square in Cairo, Egypt. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.